So, I've read um, the fourth installment in the Dark Ages Rising sequence. Hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Earn the Book Quester, and today I got this great awesome book, The Grey King, by Susan Cooper herself, a Newbery Medal winning book. And well, let's get right on to it. If you remember Will Stanton, the last of the old ones, an extremely powerful guardian of the light who has been placed around the planet to combat the rising dark. Will Stanton is the last of them, and he is on his first solo quest. Currently, he is in a wolf's village, where he remem remembers the rhythm from the last book. Something about a raven boy, a harp, waking the sleepers, and the Grey King. And he must, must retrieve the harp, and use the harp to awaken the sleepers. An ancient, an ancient amount of knights who will help combat, combat the dark in the great battle that is coming. Now, he, there he meets the raven boy, Bran, whose mother is a mystery, and his father adopted him. And he is quite, well, he's peculiar. He believes in the old ones in the dark, and Bran says that he will help Will in order to complete his quest. And so Will, he finds out that a particular rock is named the and is named after a bird. And something the rhythm talked about, the bird's gate, which the youngest will open. So he goes up to it and opens the gate. And inside is some sort of palace like place with beautiful engravings that seem to come to life. And there Three great lords stand, and they ask him questions, riddles, and they ask him to Bran as well, who is with them as well. And thankfully, Bran and Will all answer their questions correctly, and they are given the harp, which if the user plays, is protected from any darkness or any light force that wishes to harm its player. Basically, a shield that can block anything. And now they have the harp, and next they must awaken the sleepers, if they only knew where they were. However, the Grey King, one of the greatest of the Dark Lords, reigns over the mountain range of this Walsh village. He's one of the most powerful of the Dark Lords, and he will stop at nothing to stop Wool Stanton from accomplishing his quest, which is to raise the sleepers out of their centuries-long sleep in order to raise arms in battle against the Dark, and ultimately stop the Dark from rising. Meanwhile, Bran's past is slowly, slowly revealing itself. His, his mother's name was Gwen. Or was it? Or was it Guinevere? The Queen of King Arthur. Who is he really? Bran? Who is he? Is he really the son of a normal Welsh man? Or is he the son of the Pendragon, the heir of the greatest king that England has ever known, and the one who will wield the crystal sword against the battle against the dark? That is right, Bran's true identity is the son of the Pendragon, the great king of England, who will lead the sleepers into battle against the dark. And so as Bran's true identity reveals itself, Will finds out the secret old name of the lake that he was near to, and he finds out that connects to the rhythm as well, and that requires him to play the harp next to the lake. Meanwhile, before that, he remembers the Grey King's threat. He tells Bran to go back. He tells Will to go back, and he shall harm him no farther. However, even though the dog cannot kill the dog, kill the light, 
there will be not much different than it. If Will Stanton continues to stay, and he says a sweet, melodious voice, the Will Stanton may keep the harp. However, he may not raise the sleepers from their sleep. However, Will Stanton hurries to the lake to play the harp. Meanwhile, he, meanwhile, the Grey King, unable to directly attack Will, he pulls his protection and magic around an ordinary selfish pig-headed man who comes to Will and tries to stop him from playing the harp and waking the sleepers. However, after a brief struggle, Will pulls the harp out of the bag and plays it. And when he plays it, the sleepers, great knights on great horses, come. And the Bren's a true identity is revealed to the world. Bren's father, or adopted father, says that, I wish it's not, I didn't, I wish I, 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 I couldn't believe it, but now I have to. For Bran is not my son, but he is from Cavalon. And he is the son of the Pendragon, the greatest king of all England, King Arthur. And he, he will be the ones to lead the sleepers to the final battle. And so there the book ends with another L for the dark side. However, the dark side is still rising, and there is still one last magical artifact that must be found in order for the light to come to full power to combat the dark. And that is the Crystal Sword, which we will probably find out about in the next book, which is, I believe, the Silver Tree. I mean, some, some, something about a tree, I don't remember correctly. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, that is pretty much it. And okay, a couple things. It's a, it's a, it's a new Mary Battles book, and it was pretty amazing. And something about the way it's written feels very ancient. It feels sort of, sort of mythical. So I guess there's like the style of sort of mythical, wondrous magic, like the boy sat or something like that. Just that vibe I can feel from the book feels very mythical. Feels like something from long, long ago. You know what I mean? And on some points, it really reminds me of the Lord of the Rings. Of course, the Lord of the Rings is much, much bigger in the scale of world building. That's J.R.R. Tolkien's special gift. However, comparing the style of writing that it is written in, you gotta say they are pretty similar. Mythical, in a storytelling, gentle, yet mysterious way. And meanwhile, the plot itself is sometimes very easy to guess. Like, for example, our... <laughs> Bran being the son of the Pendragon, I was like, Ha! Huh, his mother disappeared! So, are you sure his father is his real father? Yeah, that, that was the first thing when I thought when, when he said, Oh, I'm Bran. I'm, I'm the Raven boy. So, yeah, that sometimes it's easy to guess. However, the implementation of Welsh and all sorts of mythology from the current United Kingdom area is actually insane, since I don't really know much about that area's myth. So I guess in some ways I'm studying mythology, which is very cool. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this book. Again, a perfect little puzzle piece that fits into the beautiful sequence called the Darkest Rising sequence. However, one final critique, I do have to admit that sometimes all of these pieces are just small fragments of the huge piece. And sometimes just reading that small fragment doesn't give you that full effect. So. If you look at them together, they're, um, they're awesome, but if you look at them individually, sometimes one of the books or another of the books are more lacking in plot intensity or quality to the other ones. However, when put together, it creates a beautiful series, which, which I am witnessing while I'm reading through them right at this moment in time. And like always, your book cluster, Aaron the book cluster, have a great day. I highly recommend this book, but however, I would also highly recommend you to read the entire Darkest Rising sequence before reading it, if you haven't already. Thank you, and goodbye.